I feel sick. But let's read the Jehovah's Witness tract anyways. Starting here, the Bible contains numerous prophecies, many of which have already been fulfilled. Consider an example. Through the prophet Isaiah, who lived in the 8th century BCE, well, 8th and 7th, according to tradition, which isn't exactly a reliable source of information. Jehovah foretold that the city of Babylon would be destroyed. Well, it seems that way, but we don't have evidence that the book of Isaiah is actually that old. The oldest manuscripts that we have are dated between 100 and 150 BCE, which are after all of these things took place. So there's no reason to assume that the book of Isaiah was written before these things and has since gone unchanged. Details were given to show just how the city would be conquered. Invading armies would dry up Babylon's river and march into city without a battle. Actually, the Bible doesn't say any of that. At all, as far as I can tell. But let's read the context of the first verse that they cited for this prophecy. Whoever is found will be pierced through, and whoever is caught will fall by the sword. Their children will be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be looted, and their wives will be raped. Here I am raising up against them the Medes, who regard silver as nothing and who take no delight in gold. Their bows will shatter young men. They will show no pity on the fruit of the womb, nor mercy to children. And Babylon, the most glorious of kingdoms, the beauty and the pride of the Chaldeans, will fall like Sodom and Gomorrah when God overthrew them. That doesn't sound like they just moseyed on in and said, hey, can we have this city now? And everyone was just like, yeah, take it. It sounds like some sort of conflict. That is not all. Isaiah's prophecy even named the king who would conquer Babylon, Cyrus. Notice that the verses that they cite here are in chapters 44 and 45, while the verses that they cited earlier are in chapter 13 and 14. It seems to me like those verses are far enough apart to be in different contexts. Well, here's something important to know about the book of Isaiah. There's universal consensus that it was written by more than one person, probably three. That's because after chapter 39, it takes a completely different style and stops using Isaiah's name, and it seems to be written from the perspective of three different time periods. Here's my point. The verses that they cited earlier for the prophecy of the fall of Babylon was written around the time where the Persians, Medes, and others took over the Assyrian Empire. But the verses that they cited later for King Cyrus was written around the time where Cyrus had already taken over and was already well known. That's why the verses that they cited here talk about Cyrus in the present tense and as if the audience is already familiar with him. But if these two were connected as a prophecy, then it would be flat out wrong. Because remember how earlier it talked about the Medes taking over Babylon, which was a totally separate event from when Cyrus took it over. It goes on to talk about how Cyrus took it over, whatever. Regarding Babylon, it was foretold, she will never be inhabited, nor will she be a place to reside in throughout all generations. No Arab will pitch his tent there, and no shepherds will rest their flocks there. This prophecy did more than predict a city's fall. It showed that Babylon will be desolated permanently. I guess that's sort of true, except when you consider the fact that this verse is in chapter 13, where it talks about the Medes taking over Babylon. And there definitely was people living there after the Medes had involvement with such a conflict. You're constantly leaving out this one really important detail that goes against pretty much everything that you're saying. I expected more from the Watchtower. Actually, no, I didn't. This is exactly what I expected. Considering how the Bible is a book of reliable prophecy is faith strengthening, is it not? Well, it might be if it actually was that. After all, if Jehovah God has fulfilled his past promises, we have every reason to be confident that he will fulfill his promise of a paradise earth. Now, I've skipped over a lot of this, but this tract keeps going on and on about how there will be another earth that will be paradise. And the reasoning for why you should believe that this is true is that everything else in the Bible has been shown to be 100% correct. So you have to believe this too, but of course, none of it really holds up. <laughs>